There are just a few days to go now until the defining moment of Boris Johnson's entire political career. The general election of December the 12th will either grant the PM his sorely needed majority to govern for five years or make him the second shortest serving Prime Minister in British history. It's win or lose everything, which is why he's packing everything he possibly can into his daily campaigning schedule. The Sun joined the PM for a full day on the stump, all 16 gruelling hours of it from dawn until late at night, for a glimpse behind the scenes and a closer look at the man himself. This is a day in the life of Boris Johnson. It's before dawn in Downing Street and the number 10 building is already alive with civil servants meeting. On this cold December Monday, the PM is to be briefed on a NATO summit that he is hosting in two days time. He then heads around the corner to CCHQ, the Tories' base and campaign hub. Here he attends an election briefing and receives his first press grilling of the day from me for the next day's edition of The Sun. Morning, Prime Minister. How what are you? Are you? Nice to see you? What are you up to today? I'm just about to go to a memorial service uh, at uh, Guildhall, and then I'm coming with you to Southampton. See you there. See you there. The Prime Minister's day is scheduled down to the minute. From CCHQ, a police-protected motorcade escorts him and the Home Secretary to a vigil for the recent London Bridge terror attack victims. From there, the motorcade speeds out of London to the south coast for an election stop in the port of Southampton. To minimise the Prime Minister's vulnerability, his motorcade never stops moving. Specious police motorcyclists escort the bumper-to-bumper -bumper chain of powerful vehicles, slingshotting ahead of the convoy to block traffic on the Prime Minister's route. Those guys on the motor, they, those, those uh, people are unbelievable yeah. what they do to get us through traffic fast. And I do feel I do feel a bit ashamed sometimes, in a, you know, of the, of, the, of the way they help us. But it is essential. I very was at the sorry. back of it. It was it was kind of slightly hard going. A lot of stopping and starting. I'm very sorry. Slightly being the back of the washing machine. Sorry. Do you want to get cancer? No, I, no I, think, I don't. Cause I'm, I'm I'm really too busy writing speeches and thinking about the next Definitely thing. Definitely get cancer <laughs> if you're writing. No, speeches. not on the contrary. It's a way to distract yourself. No, I no, I don't get cancer at all. Arriving in Southampton in what felt like record time, with the speed limit not always observed, the PM holds private meetings with port staff. He's then given a tour of the facilities, inside and out, local and national media in tow. I absolutely love it. It's inspiring to come here to Southampton, to talk to the people who run this port. They're called ABP and, you know, they've been massively in favour of Brexit for, for years and they see the opportunity for this country. What they want is to, is to get Brexit done and, and move on. Uh, you get a fair bit of stick out and about. Some people share their views with you. Hugh Grant, who played a actual Prime Minister on television, Love Actually, he said a Boris Johnson Premiership would be catastrophic and everyone must do all they possibly can to deny you the majority. Well, you know, I, look, I, I think there's, a, of course, people, uh, a lot of people care very strongly about, uh, about Brexit and they, they want to stop it. But I think the people of this country voted for it. And uh, the most people I meet, I make an exception for the gentleman you, you mentioned, obviously, but most people I meet uh, do think this is a great country, uh, a, a great democracy, they want us to move forward. Uh, they see great excitement and great potential, and and I think they're just as frustrated with the paralysis in Parliament. The personal abuse that doesn't bother you at all. No, no, no. And it's absolutely, absolutely water off a duck's back. Water off a duck's back. Before the Prime Minister faces the assembling TV cameras, he's briefed by his political aides. He still has a country to run, as well as fighting a general election campaign. So today. You started up going to a memorial for a terrorist attack. I did, yeah, that was very sad. But you then uh, came out campaigning. You're yes. now going to go back to London for a, to plan a NATO summit. And that, that's a fairly large yeah, 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 but multitasking. Yeah, but that's, that's quite a lot. I know, I know, I know, but we, we were, how, how, we're, I'm full of energy. I'm full of energy. And, uh, but do you enjoy multitasking, spinning 15 plates at the same time? Yes, I do, and it's constantly stimulating. It's so how do you flick in from one mode to the other? One mode you're campaigning, the next mode you're trying to do business with President Macron, the next mode you're dealing with terrorists. I think, I think actually, obviously, you, you know, there's a, there's a different level of, uh, of, of focus and, and some, of the, some of the geopolitical stuff is, you know, does require a, a different mm. tone and a different, a, a, a different pitch. But what you're really doing is, is trying to bring people together. And mm. that's, that's particularly the case with, 
with NATO, where the, the common interests are so huge, really, uh, that uh, that's what the UK has to do. You know, we're the, we're the bridge between mm. Europe and, uh, and America. We always have been. That's our role, and we're going to continue to, to do that. Having screened back up the M3, at sunset the motorcade returns to CCHQ for more NATO planning with government officials. 55 minutes later, it's back on the road again, now to a Tory party rally in Colchester, Essex. You've been going for 13 hours oh, now. Oh, nothing, it's nothing. We're, we're hard, exhausted. As, hard as nails and steel springs, that's what we are. How do you, steel how do you keep your energy up? 13 hour day. Yeah, I, have a, I don't know, I, I think it's genetic, I have a lot of energy. Fantastic. by the... Bunch load. No, I don't. I, I sometimes succumb to flapjacks. How many coffees today? Quite a lot of coffee. Yeah. I've heard you ordering a few coffees today. I have, yeah, yeah. I see how I can drink an unlimited amount of coffee without impeding my ability to go to sleep the other day. This is pretty now talking, okay? It's a pretty good. Pretty's doing a brilliant job of the, doing, doing the warm, doing the, getting them all ready. Already going. It's only our party, one of the greatest and most successful political parties in the world, is on the side of the people in this country. How do you pump yourself up for a, for a I don't know, I don't know. I, because I'm, it's, it's, I'm naturally in a... This is an incredibly important moment for our country. This is the big, big choice we face in, in just 10 days' time. And I just have a huge sense of responsibility for uh, getting this right. I think that it would be a, such a disaster for the UK if we were to, to throw away our economic mm. prosperity, throw away our union, th you know, throw away our rep reputation for valuing democracy and by going for Corbyn and Sturgeon. It would just be a disaster. But, but that's the sort of stuff you say as a politician that doesn't actually excite you and pump you up to speak to people. Yeah, well, it does because, you know, we, this, is, this is it. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a very short time left and um, it's got to be done you know, there's, a, there's a there's a a, a real risk of another hung I mean I had to go through for the last three and a half months the chaos in Parliament not the knowing that we had great plans but not being able to deliver them and that sharpens your appetite to get things done and break the deadlock and Thank you, nice to see you. Thank you very much. Quick picture. Come on, how are you? Nice to see you. Thank, thanks. Oh, so sorry. Thanks for coming. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for looking after us tonight. Thank you very much. First selfie with the Mohican? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'd have to check. How was the crowd? Good. Good. Uh, I think um, in a good mood. Quite chilly in there. Not yeah. the cold. It's mild, it's mild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just felt I felt I, I could tell that it's a slightly refrigerated environment. So they, I worry that they may have been maybe standing getting getting cold. But anyway, they, they're in good shape. In the what time you have before you go to sleep tonight? Yes. Are you going to? Well, I, just, just, just yeah, you know, a few quadratic equations, a, 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 a bit of. Uh, Bit of Greek lyric poetry, nothing, 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 you, nothing complicated. You do read poetry to relax. I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody so, should. Not, not in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a terrible confession, but I do. <laughs> <laughs>